such a lot when you got mad a lot. What? Be happy. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deaf in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. I'm gonna jump up and down, gonna spin right around, gonna praise your name forever. I'm gonna shout out loud, gonna deaf in the crowd, gonna send my praise to heaven. Such a lot, when you got not a lot, what? Be happy! Such a lot, when you got not a lot, what? Be happy. Hey Samuels, you're looking pretty down. What's up? Oh, hey Chief. I I'm so sorry, but I just got a call from Lou Rodriguez, and he says he's dropping out of the training program. He he says he can't keep the schedule because he thinks it'll be too much. I just spent 20 minutes trying to convince him to stay, but it was no use. Oh, uh, I've been there for 15 years. I've seen many new volunteers come through those doors. Really? Well, he also said he's spoken to a few of the other volunteers, and they're all considering dropping out. I'm so shocked. I thought our last training went really well. That's tough. You know, this job can be difficult at times. But even in the midst of difficult times, there's ways it can be a blessing. You have to be faithful in hard times. That's the biggest lesson I used to tell every new volunteer. If you remember, that was one I even taught your class. Come to think of it, I do remember that. These four years have been not been easy, but they've been worth it. That's all I'm trying to say. We can't make anyone stay, but we can share what we have learned and seen. The hope is that alone will encourage them to keep going. This is like our Bible story this week. You're right. Peter wrote to the early church while they were going through hard times. He wanted them to be encouraged too. I think this would be a good time to go over today's story. I could use some encouragement myself. I'm available right now if you're free. That's a great idea. Have you ever received a letter in the mail? How did it make you feel? Were you surprised or excited to open the envelope? 
you know, around this time, I get a lot of cards and letters, and it always makes me so happy. And this card right here, someone wrote a very encouraging message, and it really encouraged me a lot. You know, in today's passage, the first Christians after Jesus went up to heaven received a letter from Peter that may have brought a lot of joy during a time they were going through some tough times. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter 1-2 and find out what Peter wrote in his letter. In the early church, Jesus' followers faced persecution. The disciples told others about Jesus, but some people did not like what they were saying. Those people mistreated the believers because of their faith, and many believers were forced to leave their homes and go to different cities. Peter, one of Jesus' disciples, wrote a letter to encourage them. Peter was a leader in the church, and he wanted to help these believers be faithful in hard times. Peter said, Praise God. He is merciful and given us new life. We have hope because of Jesus, whom God raised from the dead. Peter reminded believers that because we are children of God, we have blessings in heaven that cannot be taken away or destroyed. We rejoice in this promise, even though we face suffering in this life. When hard times happen, God is honored as we trust him by faith. Peter also wrote, Hope in Jesus and be holy. God is your Father. Live in a way that shows Him respect. Peter reminded the believers that before they trusted in Jesus, they lived however they wanted. Jesus gave His life to save them so they could have a better life, true life, through His Word. Peter said, This world is not your home. Do not live like people around you who do wrong things. Instead, do what is good. Live as servants of God. Show love and respect to everyone. Others will see your good works and give glory to God. Jesus gave us an example to follow. He suffered for us, dying for our sins so that we could live for what is right. Before we were like lost sheep, now Jesus is our shepherd. These Christians were experiencing lots of hardship. Many of them were hurt and in constant danger for believing in Jesus. Peter's letter gave them comfort, and he told believers to endure hardship. He wanted them to remember that God is merciful and gives new life to those who believe in Jesus. The Bible says that Christians will suffer for following Jesus, but Peter encouraged believers who face persecution for their faith. Through suffering, God can make us more like his son. Jesus gives us hope and true life so we can live joyfully for him, even in hard times. When Jesus lived on earth, he suffered many things. He was treated badly, but didn't sin. Instead, he prayed for his enemies. He loved them and forgave them. When we trust in Jesus for salvation, we become his children. And we go from being very weak to our flesh and hopeless to becoming like Jesus who overcame sin. When we put our faith and trust in Jesus, the Holy Spirit helps us live for God even through the hard times. In 1 Peter 2, 5-6, it says, You also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For in scripture, it says, See, I lay a stone in Zion, a chosen and precious cornerstone, and the one who trusts in him will never be put to shame. We are like this tissue paper right here. We may try our best to stand firm on our own, but when trials come our way, we easily fall. But when Jesus becomes our foundation, when he becomes our rock and our cornerstone, when we trust in Jesus, we're able to handle the trials because he is the one that is our strength. He is the one that is our foundation and our salvation. And we are able to handle a lot more than we would on our own. And when trials come our way, we could look to God, we could look to Jesus, the new identity we have in him. And we know that we are, we have become so much stronger in him.
Have you ever tried or watched your parents iron? Can you imagine how it would be like to be the shirt? This wrinkled shirt is being straightened out by scalding hot iron. That's a level of pain I'd rather not experience. But just like this wrinkled shirt, we sometimes make mistakes that requires us to admit a fault or correct something we did wrong. Or sometimes we may have to endure consequences of not just our own, but other people's mistakes. But when the hard times go away, we're not the same wrinkled people that we were before. God is able to use that pain and suffering to straighten out our lives and make us like new. We may not always see it when we're hurting, but when the pain goes away, we look back and see that God was in control the whole time. When painful times come into our life, our first reaction is to pray that the pain would go away. God will certainly help us get through the pain, but He also uses all things to straighten out our lives and help us get stronger. When we fix our eyes on God and keep running toward Him, He will make something beautiful of your life. If you're feeling down or going through hard times, I think we all are right now, I want you to remember that God is in control and He is always with us. Keep going to Him by praying and reading His Word. He is our peace and is always listening. And if you know someone who is going through a tough time, you can be like Peter and try to encourage them by writing a nice message or drawing a picture or even calling them. If they don't know about Jesus, maybe you can try to share with them so that they too can have the eternal hope that you have. So I want you guys to keep running this race. I want you to keep looking to God and remember that He is always with you. He is our hope and our salvation, and it is through Him that we can have eternal life. Our home is not here on earth, but in heaven, and one day we will be able to enjoy that time with God where there's no pain, no suffering, and no tears. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you that even through the hard times, Lord God, we can be sure that you are always with us. And we pray that we will put our faith and trust in Jesus alone, who is our rock and our salvation, Lord God, so that no matter what we go through, no matter how challenging or how difficult things around us may be, we will stand firm as we stand firm with you, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it's time for offering. So let's bring our offering to our offering box and let's give our God our very best worship as we sing this song together. Let's sing. Close with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
I have a few announcements for some upcoming events. The first one is the New Year's Eve worship that will start at 11 p.m. We're going to start on our own with uh, just Faithland and we're going to have a little worship and fellowship. And then we're going to be joining our parents um, a little bit before midnight so that we can ring in the new year together as a family. I know it's a little bit late for some of you, but if it's okay with your parents, try to join in and let's celebrate together. Number two, the New Year's early morning worship will take place from January 6 to January 9. Um, this is something that we have been doing every year and we will have our own worship from Wednesday to Friday and then a joint family worship on Saturday. So make sure to participate to start the new year on the right foot. Number three, the Quiet Time Bible Reading Challenge will kick off on January 1st. Um, I've been announcing that I wanted us to read the Bible daily and have quiet time with God starting in the new year. So make sure to purchase these journals as soon as possible so that you can get started right away. You could follow the schedule even without the journal, but the journal will help you with the structure and keep you motivated. So it is recommended, but I will try to also share the schedule so that if you don't have it, you could still get started right away. But if you are interested in purchasing, please email faithland at ncbc.org to arrange for pickup. All right, have a wonderful week and make sure to go to small groups today. I'll see you guys later. Bye.